Um, this is a short lecture on two-way analysis of variance, uh, particularly as it may be used um, to examine or to test moderation hypothesis. Um, before we talk about uh, two-way analysis of variance, let us first review um, one-way ANOVA so that we can understand how two-way ANOVA relates to one-way analysis of variance. So as what we have discussed um, in the previous lecture, one-way analysis of variance is used when we would like to test the mean differences between two or more treatments or populations. Uh, we use one-way analysis of variance when there is only one independent variable, uh, which in the context of ANOVA is also called as a factor that has two or more levels. Um, so the task is to know whether differences exist between two or more populations as evidenced by two or more groups of samples or two or more sets of data. Uh, similar to uh, t-test, um, one-way analysis of variance can be done when the measures are independent of one another, meaning to say unmatched um, separate samples or repeated measures, uh, wherein the measures were collected from one sample uh, repeatedly or when the measures are collected from uh, separate samples that have been matched in order to control for a contr uh, for a um, an extraneous variable. Um, now, when do we use two-way analysis of variance? The main difference would be that for one-way analysis of variance, there is only one independent variable. However, for two-way analysis of variance, um, there are um, there are two independent or two or more independent variables. Research that involves uh, two or more variables is sometimes evident in well is is evident in. Um, for example, an experimental design called a factorial design because in real life, uh, variables to, uh, rarely occur alone. Uh, sometimes researchers test hypotheses in, uh, that involve more than one factor or more than uh, one independent variable. Um, uh, in the case of an experiment, uh, they call this design as a factorial design but even if there are uh, even if it is a non-experimental design if you if you have um, uh, two predictor variables both of which are categorical uh, in measurement you can only you can also use two-way analysis of variance um, so again in the context of an experiment a factorial design is an experimental design that has two or more independent variables. Um, a two-factor experiment is the simplest kind of factorial design. So in factorial design or in uh, even uh, non-experimental designs involving two predictors that are categorical, we can use two-way analysis of variance. Um, in such cases, in the case of a factorial design or a non-experimental design that has uh, two or more um, two or more categorical variables, um, two-way ANOVA gives us information about uh, the so-called main effects. So when we say main effects, uh, this re or these refer to the effect of um, each of the independent variables uh, on the dependent uh, variable. So for example, if you have two factors or 
two independent variables uh, that means to say that um, that means to say that you we will have two main effects um, and then aside from the main effects uh, another uh, information that two-way analysis of variance affords us is the so-called interaction effect um, so when we say interaction effect it answers the question how does the influence of one independent variable affect the influence of another variable um, so let's break that down um, so one independent variable influences the um, dependent variable but the influence of this independent variable on the dependent variable is contingent on the other independent variable and that other independent variable um, is our moderator and thus an interaction effect is also synonymous to what we call as moderation so if you recall when we talked about moderation um, moderation involves examining or testing models wherein um, the relationship of uh, an independent variable and the dependent variable is contingent on um, or influenced by the level of another variable um, uh, which is what we call as the moderator um, and I've mentioned in uh, my previous lectures that there really isn't technically um, um, a statistical technique that we can refer to as a moderation analysis as moderation hypothesis can be tested by a variety of statistical techniques um, one of which is two-way analysis of variance uh, and specifically we use two-way analysis of variance when your independent variable is categorical your moderator uh, or your second factor is also categorical and when your dependent variable is continuous so here is a sample problem uh, for us to think about um, in an experiment high and low self-esteem subjects performed a puzzle task either with no audience and with an audience thus the absence of or press absence and presence sorry absence or presence of an audience is a between subjects independent variable likewise self-esteem which is categorical uh, and the categories are high and low is also a between subjects variable uh, assuming that self-esteem is a stable trait or disposition of an individual uh, and we are asked to use the data that um, is given um, in order to determine whether uh, or determine or test the effects of the level of self-esteem so that's one IV and the effect of audience that's another IV on the dependent variable which is uh, in this case the number of committed errors in performing a puzzle task uh, and likewise uh, we are also asked to see if audience can moderate the effect of self-esteem on the number of committed errors so let's try to understand what this problem is about um, so first um, let me ask you um, between those who have high self-esteem and low self-esteem do you think such variation would have an influence on the number of committed errors um, so imagine yourself as having high self-esteem um, or imagine yourself as having low self-esteem and under those two situations do you think the number of committed errors of an individual would vary um, and who exactly will perform worse those who have low self-esteem and those who have high self-esteem so perhaps we can hypothesize that those who have low self-esteem 
are expected to perform worse than those who have high um, self-esteem um, considering that self-esteem is a very important uh, construct uh, which can influence our behavior uh, particularly in certain performances next um, let's also think about uh, the presence or absence of an audience do you think such conditions can also influence um, our performance and if so under which condition do you think will the, the participant perform worse will they commit more errors um, in um, when there is an audience or when there is no audience so imagine yourself performing a time uh, uh, time pressured puzzle task do you think you will perform when uh, you are when there is an audience that is uh, scrutinizing and evaluating your performance or when you are doing it privately um, so I guess we can hypothesize that uh, that um, there will be more errors committed when um, you perform the puzzle task in the presence of an audience uh, versus in the absence of an audience uh, so those are our two main effects hypothesis and finally um, um, we are also asking do you think the influence of self-esteem on the number of committed puzzle task do you think that is contingent on whether there is an audience or not um, so um, in, uh, we, we said already that um, we hypothesize that those who have high self-esteem uh, will uh, perform better than those with low self-esteem low self-esteem individuals are expected to commit more errors um, but do you think this is consistent? Um, do you think this always happens? Or do you think there are certain conditions wherein this is more likely to happen uh, and in other conditions, um, it's less likely to happen? Uh, and particularly the condition that I'm talking about is whether or not there is an audience. So do you think that our self-esteem matters in the performance of a puzzle task when um, there is an audience uh, versus when there is no audience so may, perhaps we can hypothesize that um, self-esteem um, can influence uh, or that um, those who have low self-esteem will perform worse compared to those high self-esteem but only when the audience or where there is, when there is an audience however we do not expect a difference in the performance in the puzzle task when both high self-esteem and low self-esteem subjects uh, perform the task privately um, uh, and that is a case of moderation um, uh, we are hypothesizing that the influence of self-esteem on the performance of the puzzle task will be different when there is an audience and when there is no audience. If done privately, we don't expect a difference. If done with an audience, we expect those who have low self-esteem to, per to perform worse than those who have high self-esteem. Um, so conceptually, this is our diagram for the main effects. So there are as many main effects as there are independent variables. We have two independent variables, audience, uh, and the levels are with and without. And self-esteem, the levels are high and low. Uh, and the influence of these two factors on the dependent variable which is the number of committed errors are our two main effects uh, and what do we expect we expect that the number of committed errors will be much much greater when um, self-esteem is low and lower when self-esteem is high 
and we ima we hypothesize that the number of committed errors will be greater when there is an audience um, compared to when there is no audience. Um, so those are the main effects. Um, so as I have said, main effects refer to the action of a single independent variable in the experiment. It is a change in behavior uh, associated with the change of the value of the independent variable or the factor in the experiment. Uh, and as what I have said, there are as many main effects as there are factors. There are three factors. That means to say we are testing three main effects. There are two factors. That means to say that we are testing for two main effects. And the other one is the interaction effect. Um, an interaction is present if the effect of one independent variable changes across the levels of another uh, independent variable which in the context of moderation is called the moderator uh, the effect of one factor will change depending on the level of the other uh, and what we suggested later on is that the effect of self-esteem on the number of committed errors is not constant um, we would it depends on whether there is audience or not specifically we expect that those with la, uh, low self-esteem work will commit more errors than those with high self-esteem specifically when there is audience however we do not expect the number of committed errors to differ between high and low self-esteem participants when they perform the task without an audience so that is the specific moderation or the specific interaction that we are hypothesizing okay um, and conceptually uh, so this is how your moderation looks like this is how the interaction looks like the influence of self-esteem on the number of committed errors is dependent or contingent or conditional to whether there is audience or there is no audience. Okay. Um, now, of course, you can also conceptualize it differently. Um, you can conceptualize it um, where wherein self-esteem is your moderator and audience is your primary independent variable um, and that would um, depend on how you narrate your story uh, that would depend on your conceptualization and your arguments i'm not exactly saying that um, either uh, either this model or this model is okay to test uh, what i'm trying to say is that um, whether it is uh, the model wherein audience is the moderator or self-esteem is the moderator um, that would all depend on your narrative um, uh, that would all depend on your argumentation um, what you've read theory wise uh, what the literature says um, so it all it would all be dependent on uh, on the researcher but typically we don't test both models we only choose one model the one which is more logical uh, and personally for me uh, I think this is the more logical model as opposed to the other model wherein self-esteem is the moderator um, or at the very least that is how I want to uh, to that is my narrative okay um, so specifically um, we call this a two by two between subjects factorial design um, so labeling your factorial design is uh, also an imp also important um, we call it two by two um, because we have two numbers here because we have two uh, factors or two independent variables 
uh, and the numbers are 2 and 2 uh, because for the first factor, uh, this one, there are two levels, high and low. And for the second factor, there are two levels, uh, with and without. For example, if um, this is, uh, we uh, let's say for example, we have, um, sorry, we have, if we have another level, uh, high, average, and low, then this would have been a 3 by 2 or a 2 by 3 between subjects factorial design. Um, or if we have another independent variable, um, let's say for example, well, I could not think of a, another variable, but assuming that there is um, an, a third IV, uh, IV3, uh, and there are also two levels, um, um, level 1, level 2, uh, then this would have been a 3 by 2 by, sorry, by 3, ah, uh, sorry, by 2 uh, between subjects factorial design. So this 3 refers to these three levels, this number 2 refers to these two levels, and the last uh, number 2 refers to these two levels. Um, but that is not our example. So this remains to be a 2 by 2 between subjects factorial design. Okay. Um, now, specifically, um, this uh, two-way analysis of variance is the between subjects type, meaning to say, um, or, uh, meaning to say, there are separate samples that are representing these conditions. All in all, we have four conditions. The first condition are those participants who have high self-esteem but are performing without an audience. The second condition is those who have high self-esteem who perform with an audience followed by low self-esteem who perform privately and low self-esteem participants who perform with an audience. Um, and um, all of these conditions or the participants in these four conditions are uh, four separate groups uh, which makes this as a between subjects, between subjects factorial design, between subjects. Um, it can also be the case wherein you only have, excuse me, you only have one sample um, and that sample is subjected to the four conditions. Um, so in that case, um, that would be a within subjects uh, factorial design or uh, within um, within or, or we will be using um, uh, repeated measures uh, to analysis of variance um, and lastly it might also be the case that for this independent variable you have two separate samples uh, a sample of high self-esteem individuals, of low self-esteem individuals, but um, um, both of them um, will be sub will perform the task uh, without an audience and with an audience. Meaning to say, the sample here is also the same as the sample in this condition. The sample here is also the same in this condition. So this becomes a within subjects comparison and this becomes a between subjects comparison. So um, in that case, uh, that kind of design is called a mixed plot design because one IV is between subjects and the other IV or the other factor is, sorry, this one is the between subjects and this one is a within subjects um, uh, within subjects comparison um, uh, and that is called a 
mixed plot design. So again, um, the the and analysis wise, um, analysis wise, those are also three different types of uh, two-way analysis of variance. Um, specifically for this example uh, and for the demonstration that goes along with this, I will demonstrate a between subjects uh, two-way analysis of variance. Um, but you also need to understand that there is a uh, repeated measures two-way analysis of variance and when do we do that? When both our independent variables are uh, within subjects comparison or if um, you know there are separate samples but matching has been done. Um, and it can also be uh, a combination of um, a between subjects comparison and a within subjects comparison. Uh, and for that, uh, you will use uh, a mixed plot uh, two-way analysis of variance. Okay. All right. So, for the first hypothesis, uh, for the first for the first main effect, we hypothesize that uh, there is a significant difference in the number of errors between high self-esteem and low self-esteem group. Uh, more specifically and more correctly, we are hypothesizing that uh, the number of committed errors will be greater for the low self-esteem group compared to the high self-esteem group. Uh, and for the second main effect, um, again, we are hypothesizing that there is a difference. And more appropriately, we are hypothesizing that uh, the number of committed errors would be greater when there is an audience versus when there is no audience. Um, so here is an example of an SPSS output, although the tutorial that goes along with this lecture, I will be using JASP. Um, so how do you uh, test for the main effects? Um, so here is, let's say for example, our sample output. Um, so we have here the average number of committed errors for each of the four conditions um, but we also have comparison for um, in general um, high versus low self-esteem individuals and in general regardless of self-esteem those who performed without an audience and with an audience so to test for the main effect, what we will be looking at would be uh, if there is a significant difference, um, what is our first hypothesis? Our first hypothesis is about uh, the impact of self-esteem. So this is uh, the factor self-esteem. These are the levels, high self-esteem and low self-esteem. And um, it, in on av on average regardless whether there is an audience or without an audience so combined for those who have high self-esteem the number of committed errors averages or has a mean of uh, five errors versus uh, low self-esteem participants who on the average committed nine errors and this is the comparison that we want to make if we want to see if uh, self-esteem does have an influence on uh, the number of committed errors and numerically we can see here that those who perform or those who have low self-esteem committed more errors compared to those high self-esteem so the only question now is is there a significant difference between the two uh, if we compute for our uh, F ratio uh, will the probability of such be less than our alpha? Um, when we compare, um, or for our um, other independent variable, um, we, we, we are asking or we are also testing whether uh, audience, uh, which levels are without an audience and with an audience, 
uh, will this variation also result to the systematic variation in the number of committed errors uh, and this is the comparison to be made um, so 9 is the average of 6 and 12 5 is the average of 4 and 6 and is, is there a difference between these two uh, and what we can see numerically is that those who performed with an audience uh, committed more errors than those who performed privately. The question now for our second main effect is that is there a difference? Is 9 significantly greater than 5? That is the question. Okay. okay. And in the output, uh, we of course, uh, we will be looking at the p-value uh, when we run our uh, analysis of variance um, and if these p-values are less than the alpha then that is a statistical evidence that uh, that that there really is a difference between these two and these two values okay and finally um uh, for the interaction effect, we hypothesize that there is a significant interaction between self-esteem and audience, um, which can also be phrased as audience significantly moderated the effect of self-esteem on, on the number of committed errors. And more specifically, uh, we are predicting that those uh, or... Um, low self-esteem individuals will commit more errors compared to high self-esteem individuals um, especially when there is an audience but uh, they will perform similarly uh, when there is no audience so that is the exact nature of the interaction that we are anticipating um, and how how do we how do we test that uh, or what comparisons are we making uh, when we say that um, so it, it is this or these comparisons um, we are comparing the performance of high and low individuals but not in general we are comparing them under two conditions first we compare them when there is no audience and second we compare the performance of high and low self-esteem when there is an audience and what do you notice what do you notice between these two comparisons um, numerically it's it seems that um, when done privately the difference between high or the difference in the number of committed errors of those who have high self-esteem and low self-esteem seems to be a bit slimmer only a difference of two but when there is an audience that you will notice that the difference is much more greater those who have low self-esteem are performing twice as poor or are committing more errors, significant, um, substantially more errors than those who are, uh, or those who have high self-esteem, uh, and that's that's precisely the comparison that we are making when we are looking for an interaction. Um, what is interaction again? The influence of self-esteem. This variation on the number of committed errors is is contingent on whether there is an audience or no audience again the effect of self-esteem which is high self-esteem or low self-esteem on the number of committed errors it depends on is contingent on is conditional to whether there is an audience or no audience it is conditioned it is contingent on the moderator which is audience um, and so we make separate comparisons 
how did those who have high self-esteem performed compared to those with low self-esteem under this condition and under this condition and for there to be an interaction what we want to see is that the difference between these two is different compared to the difference between these two and what are we seeing here we are seeing that when there is no audience the difference in the number of committed errors in this case is not so great only a difference of two but when there is an audience the difference becomes more evident a difference of six so numerically it seems like self-esteem and its variation result to a greater systematical variation in the number of committed errors specifically under this condition which is also what we hypothesize but again these are numbers we are looking at the numbers alone uh, and there is a significant test uh, to determine if um, if um, there really is a difference in these two variations um, specifically there would be an interaction if it would be revealed that four and six are really not statistically different whereas six and twelve are statistically different right? so the impact of self-esteem on the number of committed errors differed depending on the audience no difference under the uh, when there is uh, no audience and there uh, and if there is a difference when they performed it with an audience um, and there is a statistical test to determine that uh, and specifically we would be looking at this term this is called the interaction term the interaction between self-esteem and audience and if our analysis of variance suggests that uh, the probability of such is less than our alpha then that would indicate um, that would indicate um, moderation And uh, of course, um, uh, there will be sort of follow-up post-hoc analysis for that. Uh, we will test really if there is a, there is no difference here and there is a significant difference here, um, uh, which we call as uh, our simple main effects uh, tests. Uh, and I will discuss much of that in uh, the JAP. Uh, JASP uh, demonstration that will accompany this short lecture. Okay, so that ends um, our discussion uh, on the use of two-way analysis of variance for the purpose of moderation. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please comment down below. Uh, I will attach to this tutorial the oh sorry this is not a tutorial um i will uh, post the tutorial soon um, after i make this video i hope that you learned uh, something today and see you in the next video